In today's video, research that explains the mechanism behind muscle memory. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and today's video is going to be a very cool, very special video. You see, yesterday I got an email from my man Eric Helms. Now Eric is one of the authors of MASS, the monthly application of strength sport. And it's been around for about a year now and it's very exciting that these articles are starting to build some momentum. They're really helping people like me and the people like you guys that are interested in kind of the science of understanding research and studies that apply to our interests, whether that be strength, whether that be physique enhancement, whether that be performance, whatever it is, they are going through all this research that's out there and kind of putting it into a format that we can understand. And this study on muscle memory is no different because they actually go into epigenetics, which is the study of genome modifications. And that's something that, you know, it's outside of my scope of understanding, but what I really like uh, about Greg's article, Greg Knuckles is the one that wrote this one, is that he kind of explains that and he kind of breaks it down in a manner that we can really understand. And so for any of us that have ever gone, th gone through a period of where we trained a bunch, right? We, we got in the gym and we were really killing it for, you know, weeks, months, maybe even a couple years. And then we had some time off. When we come back to the gym, it might feel funny at first, but we've all noticed that you can tend to make progress rather quickly, a lot quicker than the first time. And so the, the term muscle memory has been coined and been around for years. And it's certainly something I've experienced because I started lifting weights in, gosh, it was probably 1991. I know you guys are probably like looking at your calendars right now. Yes, I'm old AF, but around 1991. And believe me, I haven't lifted weights since 1991 straight. You know, I was um, in high school, then in college, then out of college. And so there were definitely periods where I would be like, you know, single and gonna lift some weights, get in a relationship, give up on the gym. Single, get in there and lift some weights, right? Now I always loved the gym, but I always noticed, and there were times I even quit because I got frustrated because I would go for months straight and nothing would happen because I didn't really understand a lot about nutrition and exercise science and all those things. So even when I would get frustrated, I would know that the second I stepped back in that gym, it would only take me a couple weeks, maybe a month to get back to where I was, which was always a little bit frustrating, right? Like you grind, grind, grind and work so hard. So it's very interesting to study to me because muscle memory is something that I've been well, well aware of all my life and um, realizing that as a drug-free bodybuilder, um, I know that you know I could probably take months, maybe even a year off the gym and get back to where I am now within a month or two, right? So, but I love the gym. I love going. It's just a part of who I am. And I feel like now that I understand things on a better level, I actually make a little bit more progress. So I thought this study was very interesting. So I'm glad this information is out. So I want to give a little bit of background because what they wanted to do is they wanted to understand the mechanism that makes muscle memory possible. They wanted to understand the genetic traits that were changing in our bodies. And, you know, honestly, as a father, I think it's interesting that I could potentially be changing my genetics and passing that information along onto my offspring. I think that's something that's kind of cool to think about. Maybe, you know, the fact that I've been lifting weights for 20 years, my children might benefit from that in some way. Maybe they'll just grow up uh, being naturally big and strong, unlike myself, who was always very skinny. We'll see. My son just turned four years old. Uh, you know, he's not benching 400 pounds yet. Yet. So let's talk a little bit about what epigenetics is and what they were looking for in this study. So in this study, they took a bunch of untrained people, right? And they wanted to look at the effect of training them, detraining them, and then retraining them. And that effect on their genome modification. So they weren't just looking at how strong they got, how much muscle they put on. They were actually looking at the expression of genes. And so how did they do that? Well, they do something that's called a muscle biopsy. And I've never actually seen this done, but I've heard about it. So muscle biopsy is basically where they take a cross section of the muscle. Um, and they were doing this in the quadriceps for this study. So 
That's probably pretty painful, and I'm guessing the study was not easy to do and uh, probably thoroughly expensive, and I'm sure that they do a very, 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 very small needle or however they get the cross section, but it's still, like, if, if you offered to me to do that study, I'm probably going to decline, unless you've got some dollar dollar bills, y'all, because I, I don't want no one taking muscle out of my body, right? Science or no science. Maybe not. Maybe if I was in research, I would be interested in it. But so regardless, they were actually taking muscle biopsies at different times throughout the study. So it's very interesting to me because that's not something you can replicate all the time. So kudos to these researchers. So what I want to what I want to help you guys understand is that there were changes in the genome. There were changes in something called gene methylation. Now. Before I start sounding smart, understand that this is not something that I completely understand, but I want to, I want to explain it to you. There was a decrease in the methylation, methylation signaling, okay? And when I heard that, I thought, oh, a decrease, that sounds bad, right? We're talking about increases here. Well, those people that were untrained, that started training, there was a decrease in the methylation signaling. But as Greg explains in the article, a decrease in methylation signaling means that the gene is read more times, it produces more RNA strands leading to more proteins. So that's a good thing, right? So we're getting more proteins. So what's interesting is the people that trained, they were untrained, they started training, they saw this decrease in methylation, which is great for more proteins. When they stopped training, it didn't change. They kept that progress. They kept that change in their genes. Then when they came back to training, they got really strong. They got even stronger than they ended at, right? So they took time off, came back, and their strength continued to rise as if taking that break was actually beneficial, which is something Greg brings up. So not only is it clear that there is a mechanism here that allows us to stop training but not completely lose all the benefits of training, in fact, muscle memory, Right, We can get back to where we were rather quickly. But Greg brings up the point, would it benefit people? He actually talks about doing a 12-week study where one group trains for 12 weeks straight, one group trains for three weeks, takes three weeks off, and then trains for six weeks. Might that group that took the three-week break actually benefit? I know a lot of us have little nagging injuries and little things that are bothering us, and, and Greg brings this up in the article as well. Might we benefit from actually just taking time off? Not trying to work around things and figure out how to, you know, you know, change an exercise so that we're constantly beating ourselves up. But if we actually just take complete time off, and this takes me back to my baseball days. Um, when I played baseball a lot, you know, baseball is very demanding on the shoulder, um, the back, the, 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 the joints of the elbow. And so when I was growing up playing baseball, we were instructed not to throw for several months out of the year. So after throwing, throwing, throwing every day, we would not throw, 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 right? And when we come back the next season, we'd be healthy and stronger. Now, I see a lot of times baseball players now throw year round, and there's also more injuries than there's ever been. The Tommy John surgery is one of the most common things that, that happens in baseball players and sports now. It wasn't very common when I was younger. That's just a correlation that I'm making because they're not actually resting. They're not actually recovering. They're, they're playing baseball year round because of, you know, there's so much involved with the money now. And I think with bodybuilding and strength sport, you know, we see people kind of lifting and training year round, never taking time off. Well, this study has got me thinking as much as it would pain me, would it be beneficial for me to just take a week, two weeks, a month off from lifting? Don't know that my brain can handle that because I love the gym, but it does provide some insight that yes, there is something going on. There is a mechanism to epigenetics, there is a mechanism to methylation that shows why muscle memory is a thing. And I think this study is going to probably kick off some really cool research. So kudos to you guys at Mass, kudos to you Greg Knuckles, and kudos to Eric Helms for telling me I am the best affiliate. I have it in writing, Eric. All right, you guys, so what do you do now? Well, if you're not already subscribed to Mass, you click the link below, Mass subscription. Just click it, download it, buy it. You get all the current episode issues from the past year. That's right, all that information to sift through. And uh, if you're like me, when you read something, you're gonna go, man, that was really interesting. Then you can click on the study itself. You can delve deeper and further. You can find out more about where the information came from. It's just a rabbit hole. And you might actually find something that you're super passionate about. I know I have. So hopefully this, this information was good for you guys. I don't like to give you too much because again, 
I want you to go get this issue of mass and all the past issues of mass. I don't want to just spoon feed you guys. I want you guys to get uh, ravenous that you have to see this yourself. So hopefully I did that guys. Hopefully you're having an awesome Easter. Normally don't do videos on a Sunday, but when I got this email last night from Eric, I got too excited about this video. So I've been planning it in my head. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'll talk to you tomorrow.